Hi, welcome to the Shepherd's Rest Doc Talk. This is episode 119. I'm Cam and this is Julie. Excuse my throat. It's a little <clears throat> hoarse. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's allergies. Yeah. It's Louisiana. <laughs> Ask anyone in Louisiana. They'll go, yeah, we all have allergies. That's what happens. You know, it just happens. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> into the Torah portion, which is um, Genesis not 13, 23 to 25. Um, I thought that we would look at a few um, things that we haven't necessarily covered before. Okay. And one of them, I really started to see this year, and I don't know why I haven't seen it before, but I really came to, um, okay, let's just start with this discussion, but we have to go back to Genesis 15 in order to really kind of start, to, or actually 14, to really kind of start to see this. Okay. Okay. Okay, the first scripture is in 1318, and we actually kind of talked about this, I think, last week or the week before, and this is where we see that Abram goes to Hebron, all right, okay. and he's Abram, he's not Abraham yet, right. he's in Hebron, and he's at the oaks of, uh, or the tree of Marar, but we see in 14, verse 13, that the, oh, the one who owns that land mm -hmm. is actually uh, Amorite. Okay. So, I think I started to get a different perspective this week that I've never had before. I started seeing, okay, we see in 14, 13 that Abraham actually goes into covenant with this Amorite. Right. With the land. He's in covenant with these guys, and then there's some other brothers there, um, but they seem to all be Amorites. All right. Okay. Well, then when we go to chapter 15, and we look at 15, um, 18 through 21, we see where... This is where the Lord's making this covenant, where he takes, you know, the the, the different pieces of the animals and the Lord right. in his wholeness walks through right. and Abraham right. sleeps. Right. But we often overlook the fact that when the Lord's saying, this is going to be your land, he also says, and this is between the uh, Nile and Euphrates, okay? This is like, Israel, when you're fulfilling everything, you're going to be big. Yeah. But he lists these other people. He says that... Um, well, I'm going to read it. it. says, On the same day, the Lord made the covenant with Abraham, saying, I have given you this land to your seed from the river of the Nile, or the Egypt, um, to the great river, the river Euphrates, with, and then he starts to list, the first three that he lists are not found in Genesis 10. So these are future tribes. Okay. Or maybe who he knew then, but we're not aware of them. Then in 20 and 21, he lists the Hittites, the Pezzarites, the um, Rephim, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Grisharites, and the uh, Yebusites. Okay. That's as good as I can do it. He lists all these. Great. He's saying, you're going to inherit them with this. Now, my thought was, so is he inheriting the people? Or are these people also going to have a stake in the land? Because it says that you're going to inherit with them. Oh, it says with them? Yes, it's not it from says them? with, no, it says okay. with the, and it lists oh. all these people. <clears throat> so I was like, oh, okay, wait a minute. Where are these tribes from? So when you go back and you look in chapter 10, you start to see that these Amorites, these tribes, these are of the line of Canaan. Okay. So my point is, in my head, I've always made it in chapter 15, bad Amorites, they're just evil people. Because he says in 16, um... 15, 16, he says, Then in the fourth generation they shall return from here, for the crookedness of the Amorites is not yet complete. So now hmm. we go, let's go back over, okay? Crookedness. Yes, the crookedness. So That's basically, interesting. That's an interesting word. <clears throat> yeah, their sin, they're not walking in the ways that they should. Twisting of the word. Yes. That's what I think of when yes. I think of cro <clears throat> crookedness. And then I started thinking, so what is the fullness? The last thing that happened before Israel goes in is they take over Sion, which he's Nephilim. Yeah. So think about it's possible that their greatest twisting is now they're accepting they're the accepting Nephilim as their the leader. Mm. And yeah. that's the fullness. I don't know. It's just, I started looking at this. I was like, oh my gosh. Because see, the Amorites went into covenant with Abraham. This right. part. I right. mean, someone. Now, the reason why this came up is because when we go to chapter 23, where we have the death of Sarah, we talked about it last year. That it's very possible that Sarah was already there shopping for a burial site because um, we have, you know, her son who is being taken by her, his father to be... Right. 
offered. So it's possible that she was sent to go and get a burial site just in case he wasn't raised right away. Gotcha. And then she died there. Okay. <laughs> so let's look at how 23 unfolds. Okay. We have where <clears throat> Abraham, now remember, he's already in covenant with the Amorite people there. Okay. Right. And yet when he's here, he goes and he goes. He, he goes to the town, Hebron area, mm -hmm. to mourn his wife and to find a burial place for her. Knows exactly where to go. Right. And it says in 7, 23, 7, it says, So Abraham rose and bowed himself to the people of the land, the sons of Seth, uh, excuse me, of Heth. So I went back and looked. Heth, that is, those are Canaanites. Yeah. Okay. So he's living in the land of Canaan. Yes. He's making deals with Canaanites. Right. Hittites are also of the Canaanite line. <clears throat> right. So we've got all these people who are in this, this group of people who we're thinking from being cursed from Noah, bad people. Yes, they are going to be servants. But that's the deal. They're going to be servants. The Lord, I'm like, oh my gosh, the Lord is setting this up where this is why 15 has this list of people. Because Abraham, in his um, interaction with these people, it's a positive thing. These are the forefathers that are actually going to save the generations to come. Just like our forefather of Abraham saved Israel is to come. Does that make sense? Like, it's setting up all these players. I never mm -hmm. saw that. And again, I go to 23, and you look. Here's what I didn't understand. <clears throat> all these players in 23, um, the sons of Heth, the, um, the Amorites, the Hittites, these are all cousins. So they all own land, but it's, it's their area. We see in uh, chapter 10, 15 of Genesis, it talks about that as Canaan's family grew, they spread. They're actually up in the Turkish, in, up in Turkey area, but they start to spread down into the promised land. All right? Okay. And that's why we now have them in Hebron, and later we see the Amorites over into the Moabs in Numbers 21. Right, right. Okay. So they're moving, and they're, they're nomads. Well, they're not nomads. They're taking over land. Okay. Yes. Used to yes. okay. So here we have Abraham, who's a Hebrew, it is a grand insult to allow him to own land. Oh. Because he's not cousins of the people there. Well, then why were they going to give him some? Because he didn't buy it. And there's no rightful heir if you're given. If you're oh, given it, it can be easily detected. That's why they wanted to give it, so right. they could just take it back. Exactly, because later, it could be argued later. You could okay. save face, but when your next generation, just like David tells his sons to do something once he's gone, mm -hmm. it could be the same idea. Make sure you get that back when I'm gone. Yes. Yeah. And there would be nothing to dispute. Right. But a part of Abraham not arguing over the price, mm -hmm. he had to get him to name a price. I didn't know that. He had to get the guy to <clears throat> name a price? That's why he's like, no, really. I'll, he keep, kept going until he's like, what is 400 shekels? Yeah. Sold. He needed a witness. He needed all the judges. That's why he says, no, it has to be in front of the judges. He right. needs them to give a price. The 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 typical way was you don't give a price you give it they use it they're gone you don't worry about it you just take you reabsorb it right but this way by giving a price and a f more than fair price it was you couldn't argue it yeah yeah you could never take it back yeah and it's not that's why it's used for generation to generation to generation right so you know something i kind of saw with abraham uh only paying full price like uh -huh. wouldn't pay anything less than full price is because Yeshua had to pay the full price. Oh, that's good. You know, yes. so when Sarah acting as the bride, right. who's, who's died because all those who died are going to rise. Right. But Abraham had to pay full price and purchase that land. Right. Where Sarah is, just like Yeshua had to actually die, pay the full price to pay for us so we can rise. Oh, that's again. good. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I saw him saying, <clears throat> no, you know, as a pattern. Right. I will only pay full price. Yeah. Okay. And in doing that, he not just bought the field. He bought the whole world. Yeah. Right. All of it. So, again, I see that whole world idea in 23 and in 25. Because mm -hmm. when in 25, we have the listing of um, his other children. And we have the listing of Ishmael's. Now, <clears throat> again, I started to see another perspective sw uh, twist. Okay. Change. Whatever. And that was on Ishmael. Again, we look at Ishmael like, oh, Ishmael. Oh, and right. then there's Isaac. It's a bad, yes. Yeah, there's nothing in the word that ever says Ishmael is a bad guy. Right. I mean, right. even Abraham, he's like, oh, he could have he been the one. Yeah, yeah. So that tells you that he's not just 
awful. Yes, he took probably some bad advice from his mother <clears throat> and messed with Isaac. Okay. But the Lord took care of that. The Lord still promised he was going to be a great nation. So <clears throat> when we see this in 25 where it's listing his lineage, mm -hmm. it's because they're honored. These are kings. Yeah. They yeah. were honored. Twelve kings. So then I start thinking, why do we have such a negative perspective on Ishmael? And it's a lie. Just like Jacob's lied about by his brother Esau. Right, right. Ishmael has been lied about yeah. by the Muslims who say he's the father of Muslim faith. Right. But he's not. I yeah. mean, the Muslim faith came in 600 years after. After Yeshua. Right. After <laughs> Yeshua. Yeah. And then they go back and claim a guy who's like, I mean, he'd probably be like, what? I've been circumcised, dude. Yeah. I mean, I'm coming <laughs> in with my daddy's people. Yeah. Isaac's my brother. That, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, they like, you know, they're brothers. They bury their dad together. Yeah. The reason why they're the only two that bury is because... Um, Abraham sends all the others off. Right. So they're not in the area. But obviously there's still some interaction there because right, he, right. he Isaac, is hanging out at the whale. Right, right. That was well, not whale. The well that uh -huh. um, his brother was given the promise he's going to be a nation. So now he's hanging around doing what? Well, I'm waiting for my promise to be a nation. And that's where he finds his bride and literally gets the promise. And that's where Sarah's tent is right there. Yeah. So, again, it just shows there's some sort of understanding of greatness there. There's some sort of understanding of, of that blessing being among them both. And I really started going, God, I'm sorry that I had such a bad thought Negative about him. Thought, yes, yes. Because the truth is I just bought a lie that's being propaganded, uh, propagandized out there for us to see By the Christian him. faith. Yes. Yeah. For us to see him as a negative. Because our mindset is it must be one or the other. One's blessed, one's cursed. That's not what the word says. Right. They're blessed and they're blessed. Then we see in 24. So look at what we have in 24. In 24, we have in 2420 where Rebecca, she gives the water to the camels, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not until she's completely finished watering them mm -hmm. that the servant acts. Yes. Not until the act is finished so it's not that she starts it wow look at her he's going to see if she follows through yeah because 10 camels is a lot of water yes once she follows follows through he gives her these the jewelry right yeah yeah but it's only so she has a gift and then once she now says yes to being the bride yes she gets it all but so does laban and her mom i i saw that too this yeah. week i was like you know we have abraham saying mm -hmm. Go get Isaac a wife among my people. Yes. See, we think that once you are saved and right. become part of the body of Christ, you're the bride. But that's not how this pattern is laid out. Right. It's laid out as Abraham's the father. He says, go get a bride among my people. So it'd be like the father saying, okay, Holy Spirit, it's time to go gather the bride right. among my people. Yeah. So not everyone who's among his people is going to be the bride, but they all get gifts. And they're all his people. And it's always, they're all his people. <laughs> right. And they all serve a purpose. Yes. You know, but... Rebecca was the one who, just like Abraham, had hospitality. Yes. So why, that's what made her stand apart. And when you look at Laban's response, because Laban's response looked like hospitality, yet it when was, you ooh, look at money, look at the yes, money. And when you look at Rabbi Foreman brings this up, when you look at the Hebrew words, it's not Laban who actually feeds the camels, unloads the camels, and washes the feet. Right. It's actually Eleazar who does it. Yeah. Which, no wonder, before he even eats, he's like, mm, before we eat, let's make sure this is going to be a deal. Right. Because I've been working this whole time. Yeah. I've seen your hospitality, and I've seen hers. Yeah. Her hospitality, True. I wanted True. to give. Yes. Your hospitality, I need to make sure that this whole deal is going to happen. <laughs> you know, because yeah. I don't yeah. want to keep dealing with this. Right. So, <clears throat> and he's, think about that. He's used to being with Abraham. So that oh, kind of hospitality is like exactly foreign to him. You know, we would be used to that. We're, nowadays, when someone shows hospitality, we're like, gosh, we you're feel so guilty. sweet. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, we feel guilty. But to Eliezer, that was like, wow, I've never been treated like this before, I'm sure. Right. right. And, yeah. and the thought, I don't know, but, you know, when you said that, I just thought, yeah. And if his Laban's thought process is, well, you are a servant. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. let you be a servant in my house. Right. Instead of. I'm going to serve my, yeah, excuse yeah, me, yeah. No, I'll bring you in because you've got goods, but I'm not going to treat you as if you're my master. Right. You know, you can right. come in his authority to give me stuff, but I'm not yeah. treating you as his authority. But look what Rebecca did. <clears throat> right. Rebecca did mm -hmm. do that. And she was the one that was chosen. She, not that Laban would be chosen for a wife, but you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. She representing <laughs> no. the one. You know what? 
what else it um, taught me, maybe, I don't know, was that Rebecca seemed to be at the right place at the right time. She'd been obedient. Well, she was with the sheep, she was doing what she was supposed to do, but she seemed to be at the right place at the right time, which kind of hints to the fact that the bride could be a time-framed Well, we've talked chosen. about that before. You know what right. I mean? <clears throat> it could be people who are alive at a certain time right. when the servant is sent out to collect her. Right, right. It's I, just a thought. Yeah, and I'm not far from that thought, you know. I yeah. think that the, the big this week for me was realizing how all these other tribes are going to come in. They're also his people. Yeah. Look, yeah. the hospitality of the Middle East I know. is far surpasses what we do for us. I know. You know why? Because they are all sons of Abraham. I know. And they yes. act like him. Yeah. Yeah. Now, they may be serving a different God, but look, one of the biggest changeovers of you know the times is going to be when they start to see, oh, wait, 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 we serve... We, we've been fed lies. Yes. You know, it's not just us in the Christianity who are like, wait, we've been right. fed lies. Right. It's every religion in the world will be like, we've been fed lies. And I would say in Christianity, our lies are a little less deep, maybe, yeah, yeah, as yeah. other religions in the world. But still, you know, that awakening, how, how vain of us to think that's just going to be in Christianity. That's all the religions. And so I want to read real quick in Isaiah 60. <clears throat> It's 60 verses 1 through 7, and I'm going to read just part of it. Just so once I start it, y'all be like, oh, I know this one. It says, Arise and shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Makes me want to start singing. Yeah. Yeah. For look, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness the people. But Yahweh arises over you, and his glory is seen upon you. And the nations shall come to your light. And the kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. All of them have gathered. They have come to you. Your sons come from afar off. And your daughters are supported by the, on the side. And then it goes on and it starts to list the names of these tribes coming. They're the ones we see in chapter 25. They're the ones that we see from Canaan's people. I mean, yeah. you start to see how the Lord is really bringing those nations yes. in who yes. are not just of Abraham's nations, but yes, but throughout the world. Yes. I mean, really all coming because the light has shined, because right. he sees Israel doing what they're supposed to do. Yes. I love um, Ezekiel 38 is like that too, where it talks about that final war or the Gog and Magog uh -huh. war, whether it's the first before the tribulation right. or at the end of or the both. millennium or both. The point is, he says the reason he's doing it is so that nations surrounding Israel will know yeah. that he is God, right? Yeah. which tells me that they're confused. Yes. Yeah. You well, know what I, I mean? Yeah. It, it, it's not just straight out rebellion. They've really been fed lies. Yes, they've been fed lies. A lot of people have been fed lies. Yes. You know. Yeah. And we're all starting to wake up. Oh, oh okay. Says, Ooh, and it you. also makes me wonder <clears throat> what, you know, Eliezer was telling them about Abraham and what happened to Sarah. And they were all like, oh, oh, okay. And it makes me wonder, I wonder what they thought happened to them. Oh, good question. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, well, like they're gone for a long time. So are they dead? Are they, yeah. you know, the fed the lies. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. You know, and then here comes the Holy Spirit to enlighten them, and, and then Rebecca's oh, like, oh, I want to go. Yes. Oh, I can't believe the Lord has been with you, and he is everything. Because remember, the promise, or the the instruction was for Abraham's father to go to Canaan, to go to the land of Canaan, and he didn't. He went up to Terah, to, uh, Haran, Haran, and stayed there. Right. So I would imagine they all knew that they were all supposed to end right. up there, but only Abraham did. Right. And so then he sends Eleazar <laughs> to get the bride. So I don't know. Still to for me, the Hebrews. Yeah. To me, Rebecca was like, oh, it is true. And just I love, I fell in that. love, love with that thought right. of being the mother well, of the blessed line. Spirit testifies to spirit. Yes. I mean, could you imagine yes. if that was the, oh, I love that, love that. Yeah. Yeah. So my final thing is we read in Isaiah 60 that they look up, right? Look up. And we see that in 24, when Isaac is there, he looks, he looks up. up. And this interesting thing is we also have the bride. We have Rebecca doing the same thing. She looks up. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, she's on a camel. She should actually look down. But anyway, they're both looking up. And I'm like, oh, because that's the Lord. Yeah. The yeah. Lord. They both looked up. They both relied on the Lord. 
to provide for each of them and them looking up yeah. brought them together. Yeah. And that's, I guess, again, how yeah. uh, marriage should be. Both of that's, your eyes are on the Lord. That's why in Luke, at the very, you know, when he says, when you see all these things happen, look, look up. up. Oh, Your redemption yeah. draws nigh because oh. that. There you go. Testify, you know, that's the bride looking right. up. Okay. Who We're said the say, spirit yeah. and the bride say, come. Yeah. Here we have the spirit and the bride. Yeah. And they're coming. They're saying, all right, let's get this thing on. Yeah. And they go to meet the king. The king. Oh, I love it. Anyway, there's so much here, and I know we didn't, again, talk about the traditional, but there are so many teachings out there that you can yeah. find that will talk about uh, the going to get the bride and how the message is told one way and then told another by Eleazar. There's right, just all right. kinds of great stuff. Um, so we're going to wrap it up. We thank you very much for joining us today on this um, great, dreary, dreary fall day. Yes, finally, finally, it feels like fall. Yeah. So we are so <laughs> glad. complaining. No, mm -mm. We're so glad you decided to spend some time with us, and we hope to see you next week for one night. No, 120. 120. 120. Wait, we're yeah. breaking out the teens again. All right. All right. We'll see you then. Shalom. How all these other tribes, all. That's just too stinking loud. Too loud. Too loud.